Hi guys. This will be a quick video. Uh, this is an unboxing video of a package I just received from Petersburg, England. And I've been excited about this uh, package. Uh, and let me open it up for you, show you what it is. And the reason they protected it is because this is an antique. And this is it. And what this is, is the original tin of a Sandow spring grip dumbo. And this is very, very rare. comes the original tin box that uh, a person would have purchased it back uh, in the early uh, 20th century. Oh, this is this is really nice. I have another pair of uh, Sandow. Uh, dumbbells that I purchased were $249.99 plus $20 plus 30 cents shipping, but this one cost me $516.61. So this is uh, over twice as much as my other ones. So I paid $516.61 for that antique. And I purchased it, uh, even though I already own uh, several Sandell's uh, adjustable spring grip dumbbells, because specifically I wanted the, the original instructions that uh, Sandell had intended uh, for the use of this dumbbell system. And I find uh, Sandell's theory of uh, muscular development by grip compression to be, be fascinating. Uh, as you probably already are aware that uh, whenever you uh, engage in any type of uh, system of muscular development, it's based on progressive overload. And the progressive overload is based on tension. It's putting the muscles as tense as possible. And there's different ways to achieve this uh, progressive uh, overload. There's progressive resistance. Uh, one way is through load. It's just by increasing the weight of whatever you know, a barbell, a dumbbell, or kettlebell that you're lifting. So, uh, for instance, if you're lift, lifting uh, Olympic barbells, you just add, you know, more weight plates to it. Or if you're using a kettlebell, you just go to a, uh, a heavier kettlebell. And the same thing with dumbbells and so on, slam balls or bases or whatever type of uh, weight object that you're using. So, load is uh, increasing the load is one way to achieve, uh, you know, a progressive overload increase the progressive resistance. Another way is through volume. Uh, let's do it, instead of doing a set of one, you do a set of three, or a set of five, or a set of 10 or 15, or whatever, whatever set. But if you increase the volume of, uh, of a load, then you increase the, you know, the overall uh, tension that your, your muscles will have to go through. And then, you know, that will spur muscular development least muscular endurance. Another way is by uh, increasing speed or decreasing speed. In other words, uh, you can get uh, progressive overload through tempo. Uh, you can do super slow training, like super slow reps, or you do explosive reps. Um, in powerlifting, they, you know, bench pressing, they often have a light day where they're using uh, 
resistance bands. And they're they just using the bar and resistance bands and they're trying to explode, you know, use uh, explosive reps, increase the bar velocity. And then you have your heavy days where you're, you're lifting as much as you possibly can. Uh, another way is through overcoming inertia, like uh, using a flywheel. That's what a flywheel does, it overcomes inertia. And there's uh, I have a push pole sled that uses magnetic resistance. A lot of liftable machines and uh, air bikes we use magnetic resistance. And that creates tension. You can uh, also use time for progressive overload. For, for instance, we use uh, a static hold. Uh, or isometrics. Isometrics can use muscular contractions without joint movement. Or, or you can use pauses. And uh, a lot of power lifters will use pauses. Where they'll stop in the middle of a movement, hold it for a count before uh, pushing back up again. But time can, can create uh, a progressive overload. You know, the longer you hold a, uh, a barbell in a in a static position, the more tension and the harder your muscle has to contract and that creates a muscular development. And you also have elasticity, like if you use a bungee cord or if you use a resistance band. When you lengthen the band or you lengthen the bungee cord, that creates a progressive resistance or progressive overload and more muscular tension. But what fascinated me about um, Eugene Sandow, it says Eugene Sandow used grip compression. And that uh, the more you squeeze his uh, adjustable uh, grip dumbbells, the more the muscle contracts, and that creates progressive overload. And there's seven springs, so you can work your way up from two springs all the way up to seven. But, uh, just the idea of using grip compression is something most people don't think about. I find this to be a fascinating topic. I mean, the idea that, uh, uh, that Eugene Sandow can use uh, the law of muscular radiation to outlift bigger and heavier professional strongmen fascinates me. I mean, uh, when you the more and more I study this, the more intrigued I become because, uh, for instance, uh, the muscular potential that everyone has is, is you know, we, we don't tap it. We just don't. Uh, I'm sure you heard of uh, instances where there was an emergency and where a uh, mother would lift a car to uh, rescue her husband who was trapped underneath or a child. And that's because uh, we have tremendous human potential in our muscles, but we only tap maybe 20 to 30 percent of our, our muscular potential. And when I watch uh, people like Heidelin Diaz, who uh, is a Filipino weightlifter who won the gold medal, uh, she was the first uh, Filipino to win a gold medal for her country in the Olympics, and, and looking at the uh, phenomenal weight that she lifts, well over her body weight, people, uh, you know, doubling, tripling, you know, lifting, you know, uh, there's people who, who uh, can deadlift three times her body weight, that kind of thing. I mean, that, that to me, that fascinates me because uh, it shows that what, what, what's possible. And uh, I would, I'd like to learn, you know, how to do that. And uh, I can see many practical applications for it, whether you're an athlete, like a wrestler. Uh, my grandson uh, won the uh, Ohio Division Three high school uh, wrestling championship. My grandson uh, wrestles for Columbia High School, uh, Columbia Station, Ohio, and uh, he won the state championship for the 106 pound weight class for, for the Division Three. And he wrestled a, uh, a high school uh, wrestler who was much stronger than he was. And. Uh, he was able to win because he had a brilliant strategy, he had great coaching. Uh, the, his opponent gave up a point, let him escape, which was a mistake. I'm sure he won't do that next year. But uh, my uh, grandson uh, rode him 
he, he kicked boots, which is the term they use in wrestling, but he, he rode him. And uh, he had him clenched. He had his arms clenched around his, uh, around his crotch and his legs. And the guy who was much stronger with him was so strong, he actually stood up. My grandson holding him in his clench. Well, my grandson, what he did, he, he clenched his entire body. He, 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 he compressed, he squeezed every muscle in his body. And he recruited the muscles in his uh, legs and his glutes and his back and his arms and his chest and his shoulders. And the kid uh, couldn't hold that position, fell down. And he tried to reverse. He came very close to reversing. But because my grandson used the law of muscular radiation, the guy couldn't break it. And the time expired, and my grandson is now a state champion. So I see many potential benefits. Uh, you know, ex exploring this... Uh, this unique and unconventional way to achieve uh, muscular development by progressive overload through grip compression. Uh, I see it for athletes like uh, mixed martial artists or boxers and wrestlers. I see it for uh, you know baseball players. Uh, I, I see it for uh, people who are interested in, in physical therapy rehabilitate injuries, and they can't lift heavy loads. Uh, for instance, uh, if you have a, a rib pectoral muscle and you can't bench press anymore, you can use grip compression. Um, I see it for, uh, that's potential uh, help for people who have muscular dystrophy, or Parkinson's disease, or multiple sclerosis. Uh, I also see it as a potential benefit for, for prison inmates who are uh, confined and in segregated housing, like uh, protective custody or uh, disciplinary control, security control, because th 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 these techniques can be applied anywhere. It doesn't matter if you're uh, in a submarine deep beneath the uh, the ocean or if you're in outer space, you know, orbiting the Earth in the uh, in Skylab. Uh, you can use these. Uh, grip compression technique to uh, develop uh, strength, endurance, and size. So uh, I've already spent uh, $1,400 researching this topic and I'll spend $1,400 more because uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I find it very intriguing. And I intend to use this method to, uh, when I uh, participate in the United States Marine Corps Pull Challenge, because I can use the law of uh, muscular radiation too by gripping bars as tight as I can and squeezing my glutes and squeezing my armpits, which are all uh, compression techniques that will employ the law of muscular radiation. Uh, powerlifters already do this when they squeeze their armpits when they when they deadlift, or when they squeeze their glutes when they uh, bench press, or when they root their feet down into the ground. Um, you know, like when they squat. Uh, it's a fascinating topic, and uh, I encourage you to try this for yourself. Uh, one way is to clench your fist as tight as you can, and you will feel the not only your finger flexors uh, contracting, but also your forearm and your biceps. And if you squeeze hard enough, you'll feel your shoulders and even your pectoral muscles. Another way is when you curl. Just take your palm and press into your inner thigh. And if you do that, you'll feel your, the muscles of your forearm and your arm and your shoulders and your pectoral muscles uh, contracting while you do a curl. So the idea is to employ more of your muscles. Another way to use this uh, method is take your fist, your open fist, if you're doing a single arm press, it's clenched as tight as you can, and this will cue your other hand to tighten, and then press. And this will help you press. So the next time you try this, try a press, take your open hand, your one hand that you're not using, and clench it as tight as you can. Squeeze your glutes, glutes and your and your uh, thighs, and then press, and you'll find that you'll be able to press more. It's a 
fascinating topic. I, I intend to uh, explore this uh, more in the future. Um, to me, the potential benefits far outweigh the costs. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.